in the end of the sabbath the bible says as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week came mary magdalene and the other mary to see the sepulcher and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the lord now watch this is painting for us the scene of the resurrection the angel of the lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow and for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men and the angel answered and said unto the women fear not for i know that ye seek jesus which was crucified he is not here he is risen as he said come see the place where the lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and behold he goeth before you into galilee there you shall see him lo i have told you verse 8 says and they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word and as they went to tell his disciples behold jesus met them saying all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him and jesus said unto them be not afraid go tell my brethren that they should go into galilee and there they shall see me now when they were going behold some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done take note now and when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel they gave large money unto the soldiers why saying say ye his disciples came by night and stole him away while he slept and if this come to the governor's ear we will persuade him and secure you so they took the money and did as they were taught and this saying is commonly reported among the jews unto this day please look up the bible says among the many things that satan could not stand was the resurrection not just the cross you know many times when we teach about the matters of redemption it looks like all that we stop at is the cross and whilst the cross is a very important component of redemption it does not stop at the cross if jesus stopped at the cross that would be fatal for us are we together there is nothing new about a man dying for people founders have died for people parents have died for their children but the nature of the death of jesus required resurrection to truly prove the father's love now listen very carefully the bible says when jesus resurrected from the dead it was such a threat to the gates of hell that they came together and took counsel and said you know what we will give you money money was introduced are you saying that money has always played a role to fight the resurrection it took money they brought money and they said this is what will happen we will use our influence and secure you just say the disciples came and stole him we may not do anything about the fact that he walked upon the earth and healed the sick we may not do anything about the fact that there was a real cross at golgotha but that resurrection part because there were already prophecies that if it's true that he rose from the dead then it will give the basis for our justification it was not his death that justified us let me give you a little story the entire discourse of redemption started from what we call the lord's supper are we together now the bible lets us know that jesus was with 12 of the disciples and 12 is the prophetic number of government government and so that was the whole world in covenant coming into one man when he took of the bread and the cup and gave it to them in theology we call it the doctrine of interpenetration is the mystery by which two entities become one is the same principle we use in marriage 
when a man and a woman become joined even though they are separate personalities the bible says they have become one are we together now so if jesus were to die for the sins of the world there had to be a technology to transfer the whole world into him are we together now and that happened the basis for that connection was the lord's supper whilst they ate the bread that jesus said he was they took off the wine now he was qualified to take on the entire sin of the whole world the next sin would be gethsemane the bible says when he got to gethsemane he cried do you know why he cried he did not cry because he was afraid of death no he had been speaking about his death time and again i will die and come back to life he cried because something was happening in gethsemane the bible says he who knew no sin became sin that was what was happening there he was crying because until then mortality would not walk in him remember there was a time he walked through the crowd even though he was born of a woman he was fathered by the spirit joseph was only a caretaker the holy ghost played the fatherly role of jesus if jesus died and did not resurrect his body would still be fresh on the ground he could not be corrupted because it was not the seed of a mortal man are we together now now listen carefully so when jesus was at gethsemane the bible says he cried for the first time he tasted the pain of humanity in its full strength and he even said father if it is possible you are the god of all wisdom there is still a system you can route without my going through this he said nevertheless not my will but your will be done now watch this you have to back up and go to genesis 3 to understand what man lost so that you will understand what jesus regained when man fell many things happened number one he lost the holy spirit the holy spirit is the life of god he's not the career he's the very life of god are we together now number two man lost righteousness the very nature of god the nature that gives you access to the riches that are in god men like ew kenyon would define righteousness as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt condemnation and inferiority it's a very powerful definition but it's not just a consciousness it is the nature of God at work. He lost that. Number three, man lost dominion. Understand what man lost. Sovereign control. How did man lose dominion? He lost dominion by transferring responsibility. There is a law in this kingdom that every time you don't take responsibility, you transfer your authority. Because responsibility and authority goes together. So when God came to Adam and said, Adam, where are you? What is this that you have done? Adam transferred the responsibility to his wife. You notice God did not talk to Adam again. He said, all right, you have transferred. Do you know if the woman kept quiet, immediately she will become the head of the man. When God came, he met the person he gave sovereign authority as head. When Satan came, Satan did not meet Adam. He came through Eve. If Eve recognized authority, she would have referred Satan to Adam. But she took laws into her hands and she was deceived. When she ate of the fruit, nothing happened. When she gave the man and he ate, suddenly things began to change. Because the dominion was given to him as head over his wife. Listen carefully. I'm explaining the realities of redemption so that we will know what resurrection brought. Help that lady. Praise the name of the Lord. So he lost dominion. Adam! He complained and blamed the woman. He transferred both responsibility and authority. Woman, what is this that you have done? She said the serpent. She transferred responsibility and authority. Serpent, what have you done? He didn't blame anybody. That's how he became the God of this world. He silenced. I own up to it that I'm a deceiver, Satan. That's why when Jesus Christ was gaining it back he kept quiet with pontius pilate won't you talk and he kept quiet his silence was not weakness it was a system of reclaiming back that dominion 
there is a lesson here you need to learn every time you transfer responsibility you also transfer dominion responsibility and dominion work together peripasu you do not have response dominion and then without responsibility so for those who know their right in christ you must also know your responsibility in christ are we blessed so man lost the holy spirit man lost righteousness you have to understand this and man lost authority over creation that key that god gave man there was a throne that represented adam's dominion in the realm of the spirit when god looked he could not see adam seated there again that was why he said where are you adam was roaming around in the garden but spiritually my god this is also a lesson that means when god calls you when god anoints you there is a real throne in the realm of the spirit that signifies your ranking and your power recognized by god recognized by devils are we together now and from that time there was a statement that was made the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent and satan began to search for everybody that looked like the seed when eve gave birth to cain satan thought cain was the seed so he came to cain he until man came there was no possibility of spreading through reproduction reproduction was a concept satan had never seen it was only creation it was adam's dispensation that started the idea of spreading through reproduction satan did not know what god built in a woman so he began to study and he saw a woman's stomach protruding then she gives birth to a child and satan is saying what wait, wait a minute something is going on here and he thought she could only give birth once so he came to Cain and when he found out that a woman could give birth indefinitely he said there is problem that means this woman has the power together with her husband to multiply bodies that can host and carry the glory of God Satan began to search for that seed everybody Satan ever attacked in scripture was in hope that he was the seed when Moses was born, he thought that he was the seed. And he made children die because of him. Every time there was a battle for over Israel, it was because he had heard. The moment God entered a covenant with Abraham, Satan knew that the seed is within this vicinity. It has to be among the Jews. From that day, the Jews got into trouble. The lesson here is that Satan does not attack for nothing. Whether you are aware of what is on you or not, Satan studies people and, and picks them carefully. There are people who are not worth his attack. No, he will see you and pass you. Even if you call him, he will greet you focusing on others that he's looking for. Listen to what I'm telling you. Satan does not attack men. He's attacking the word of prophecy that is able to empower those men to be part of kingdom come. Samson, prophet Samuel, Elijah, all through. When John the Baptist came in the spirit and the power of Elijah, notice what the spirit of the Antichrist was, the question he was asking through the Pharisees. Are you the one? He wanted to know the one so he would kill him. And John kept confusing them. He said, I am the voice of one crying. Then what is this? Are you the one or not? And then, listen carefully. The Bible lets us know that after 18 years of rigorous training, from age 12, we do not hear about Jesus again. The next time we hear about him, he's 30 years old. And he comes to be baptized. Baptism. You see, John was not a Baptist. John was a prophet. Baptism was among many things a strategy that was invented for him to identify that one. So every time he would pour water on people, he would look up, he would say, You can go. Pour water on people, look up, you say, You can go. Pour water on people, you can go. Suddenly he comes up and looks at this one and says, Behold the lamb that was slain. He says, I am not worthy to untie the latchet of your shoes. And then Jesus said, Suffer it to be so that scripture will be fulfilled he dips him in water 
when he brings him out your bible says and the heavens open and god said all right creation there's no hiding again this is that beloved son the one you have been looking for notice from that day satan did not have any business with anyone again jesus became the object of attack he began to pursue everything jesus the wisdom of the father was being played so when jesus gave himself up at gethsemane there was something he was doing that satan did not understand the bible calls this mystery the hidden wisdom of god that if the princes knew if satan knew that his escorting jesus to the cross was a disaster to him he will make sure jesus did not die here's the mystery satan did not understand that the burden of the whole world can come into one person it was not part of remember even though originally he was the light bearer he had an assignment as the custodian of the mysteries of god but it was not everything about god he had it was on the excellency of the light he had that he thought he could run a parallel government so there were other aspects of god he did not know the whole world was in christ he had now become the second adam in experience now there are lots of parallels i wish i had time i would have worked a few things realize something number one every time satan wants to attack adam he goes to eve satan today is still attempting to spite god and the person he attacks is his bride the church he is still attacking that eve again and if we make the mistake the first eve made remember the first eve did not acknowledge authority that was a mistake so the second eve must be like esther that was the mystery of the book of esther the first made a mistake she forgot that she was only queen because she married the king when esther wanted to make the whole mistake he had mordecai who is the type of the holy spirit advising her and say be careful you are about to make a mistake that will cost you your position do not make the mistake of the second eve the first eve she did not refer satan to the authority that was above her now the bride of christ as the second eve he comes to us again he comes to propose to you and you refer him to the authority that you are under the bible says submit unto god then on the basis of your submission resist the devil you don't resist him by your own authority it is on the strength of your submission you resist the devil and he will flee are we together so jesus is in gethsemane follow me please and he prayed and prayed and prayed when he was done what we call the exchange began to happen that means everything that happened from that time was in exchange my goodness my goodness the first thing that happened to him was the mockery that he went through everything that he went through was in exchange for what would now become our testimony they mocked him and everything he went through then they put a crown of thorn on his head they didn't know what they were doing it was in exchange for the restoration of the dominion that man lost because the symbol of a king's dominion is his crown and his scepter without a crown and scepter there is no royalty so jesus was receiving that crown of thorn so that our dominion be restored in experience the bible says they whipped him 40 stripes save one 39 stripes while they whipped him and he went through all of those things and they tore his flesh they did not understand that that body was being broken so that ours would be made whole it's an exchange then they carried this 33 year old man i hope you know he walked down the street of golgotha naked the covering you see in movies is just for social reasons he was a naked 33 year old man in the flesh when jesus was on his way to golgotha he was an object of pain and shame the father looked at him and yet for the love that he had for man he said jesus you have to go through this 
everybody mocked him while he went at a point he fell now watch this carefully he fell because he did not have the strength to continue he had lost blood when he fell down right there they called someone called Simon of Cyrene I don't have the time I would have taught you that that is Africa the Bible calls him the nigger a black man a black man I was the only continent that identified with Jesus on his way to the cross he said I may not mean much they despised me but I can help you carry the cross that is the reason why in all honesty this is the continent that will stand to represent a true portrait of apostolic and prophetic christianity the bible says if we partook of his sufferings then we must also partake of the glory that follows this is a message for africa that rejected stone hmm. when jesus was on his way to the cross every continent left him but Africa said I will not run away from you I will go through the shame listen I hope you know that if Jesus died without dying on the cross that would be a wasted death he had to die on the cross to be a cause not to die on the floor because there is a law that is written that is only on a tree when you die that you become a cause so if he died on the floor it would have still been a wasted project Jesus was about to abort redemption but for man who came and said no I will not let this happen you may not have the energy but I will take that cross and when Jesus hung upon that cross ladies and gentlemen as he bled as he cried the father turned his face the Bible says he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied all of this was done because of you and me God was not looking for anything for himself you have to understand this and then Jesus gave up the ghost the Bible says when he died do you know what happened in hell there was jubilation beyond imagination Satan could not believe it so life can die the author of life there was jubilation in hell the saints who were in abraham's bosom in hades were now confused what is happening here i thought there was prophecy that a time is coming redemption will come for us mm. let me give you a little drama of what happened in hell while satan his celebration was shortly all of a sudden a stranger steps into the place of the dead listen sit down sit down he went to hell without the holy ghost he went to hell with the power that was originally given to man in the strength of the second adam if he was assisted by the holy ghost he would be unfair he needed to go as man and the bible says Paul was given this revelation the cohorts of hell were on him Colossians chapter 2 you read 14 15 16 the Bible says the cohorts of hell were upon him forcing him to bow what is him bowing whoever you bow to you acknowledge their authority and since he came as the express image of God and while he was bowing the Bible says he shall see the travail of his soul. Do you know what that means? One of the secrets to peace is justice. Without justice, there will be no peace. So the legal claims of justice had to be met. And Jesus, humiliated by those principalities and powers, the moment there was a declaration, satisfied. The Bible says Jesus made a public show of them in hell all these things was happening in Hades dislodge all these demons and went to Lucifer himself good to see you bring the key that you gave Adam that key that he collected in the garden of Eden Revelation chapter 1 I am he that was dead but now is alive and I have the keys 
he did not collect the key on earth when he collected that key the next place he went to was to go and preach to the souls right there who were at abraham's bosom it's in your bible apostle peter told us that he preached the gospel to them because they could not be condemned they had not been given an opportunity to declare they died in faith and in hope when he preached to them all of them said we've been waiting for you and he said all right let's go and together as a team watch this jesus did not resurrect alone it was only his grave you saw but the bible says graves open imagine that event a similitude of the rapture graves began to open several people came out and listen the bible says when the graves opened the people walked in jerusalem they saw them and afterwards they couldn't go to heaven because he had to be the firstborn there was a high priestly ministry now he had finished his ministry as savior but he was not yet lord uh -uh. if listen to me the resurrection was the basis for his coronation the coronation is the basis for his being lord now when he resurrected three things happened one he took his blood there is a heavenly tabernacle that is in the similitude of the one that was instructed for moses to build are we together where atonement would happen and according to the levitical law the age of the lamb determines the validity of the atonement so every year they had to renew now to end this once and for all the ageless lamb now drained his blood and took it to that tabernacle and poured it there once and for all the moment that happened he finished his high priestly ministry a coronation service like david saw the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool please understand this if you don't believe what i'm saying you are not a christian a coronation service was held in heaven and in that coronation service a name was given to him philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 down to 10 the bible says wherefore on account of this humility and this sacrifice god had so highly exalted him verse 9 and given him a name a name that is above every other name above every other name and then the bible says verse 10 that at the name of jesus that means the name is not jesus no i know you call jesus you are just saying jesus is the owner of that name that was given the name is not jesus jesus was the name he was given when he was born there are footballers today called jesus <laughs> that every knee should bow of things in heaven in earth and under the earth verse 11 it says and every tongue should confess that that jesus who became the christ when the holy ghost came upon him has now become lord that's the name notice the progression jesus he became the christ when the holy ghost came upon him and now when he completed the sacrifice of redemption the name is lord lord means absolute owner psalm 24 the earth is the whoever has that name is the owner of the earth there are four things that are there give us psalm 24 and verse 1 the earth is the lord's the fullness is the lord's the world and they that dwell therein all of them they belong to him now when jesus resurrected and that coronation service was done he quickly came back to earth and they saw him isn't it amazing that the first person who saw the resurrected christ was a woman this is why women are gates in the realm of the spirit the first person to see the resurrected christ was a woman he said take that message go and tell the disciples and then jesus made a very interesting statement he said all authority by reason of resurrection 
all authority has been given unto me Matthew chapter 28 now all authority has been given unto me verse 18 Matthew 28 and verse 18 all power well it says authority power but it, the word there is authority that is given unto me in heaven and in earth 19 it says go therefore now you your celebration of easter and the resurrection does not end with your awareness that you are justified there is a mandate attached to it go therefore please give it to us verse 19 and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit 20 the bible says teaching them to observe all these things i have commanded you and whilst you do this be assured that i am with you even to the end of the age do you know that without the resurrection there is no christianity the resurrection proved the lordship it proved once again and finally so that Jesus Christ give us Romans I believe Romans chapter 1 and verse 4 Romans chapter 1 and verse 4 the Bible talks about the implication of the resurrection that he was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead so he's resurrecting from the dead proved once and for all that this is the son of God would have the basis to argue prophets perform miracles the disciples perform miracles but now Jesus resurrected from the dead as the son of the living God the new and living way the mediator even of the new covenant Romans chapter 4 and verse 25 tells us one of the benefits and the significance of the resurrection the Bible says he was delivered for our offenses and he was raised again for our justification being justified means being declared not guilty that the price and the penalty has been paid are we together yes. so today we have confidence to stand in faith today we have confidence to celebrate many things one that there is access to become the righteousness of God access to become partakers of his life once again Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the Lord the Bible says being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham justification by faith might come upon the gentiles through jesus christ to the end that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith that seal of redemption now we have access to the holy spirit and then we have access to dominion sovereign control once again we are not weak people under the situations the under the the influence of situations and circumstances our dominion has been restored this will remain theory until you believe this truth what then is the gospel of salvation please look up what is the gospel of salvation because the bible says i am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of god unto salvation what then is the gospel of salvation listen carefully the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love the revelation of the father's love demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ the object of that sacrifice is the entire creation but man being his central focus he didn't die for man alone he died for the entire creation he reconciled creation to himself to the end that whoever believes his death his burial his resurrection and his ascension that that person should not perish but now become a partaker of his life so when we preach this glorious gospel we are not just recruiting members to a church listen there is a mandate that the whole world must know that he arose and that today he reigns and the bible says the same way it gives us a blessed hope 
that if Jesus rose up from the dead and death did not have power over him that one day everybody who has died in Christ let me bring a word of hope for you everybody you know who left you and died in Christ there will be a resurrection where the dead in Christ will arise the Bible says and we who are alive will be caught up with him in the air there are seven pillars one day we'll discuss it maybe not tonight seven pillars of the Christian faith seven of them the last of them is the blessed hope of the resurrection Christianity is not complete if we do not believe in the resurrection both of Jesus Christ and in the fact that one day all together we will experience that glorious experience thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done. The gospel of salvation. No matter what you preach, no matter what rema you bring, the foundation for the believer's justification is that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, left heaven, came and walked upon the earth, became seen, died and was buried. And according to the authority of scripture, the Bible says on the third day he rose again. Today he is seated in the right hand of the Father, that position of authority. Still continuing his priestly ministry, making intercession for the saints. What is the intercessory ministry like? He says, Father, I've been there. I understand. I've been there. I know what it means for your temple to become a den of robbers. I flogged people. I understand. Listen to me. Jesus Christ ascended to heaven with his physical body. That is the proof that he's coming back. If Jesus Christ went to heaven without his body, he would still need another virgin. He would still need to come back and grow. He went to heaven as an adult. So every condition for his return has been met. The body for him to use when he's back is with him now. This is what gives us confidence so when we say that jesus is coming we are not preaching a christian's gospel it is true the man jesus is seated at the right hand of the father and the bible lets us know that a time will come we will hear of that loud trumpet it says to comfort one another is the return of jesus christ is not supposed to be a scary event no the return of jesus christ is an event that we should look forward to with passion and with joy the glorious reconnection someday whether we like it or not this life will fold like a curtain listen to me one glorious morning we'll wake up wanting to do our thing as always and suddenly it will happen listen it will not happen the way movies told you to happen they didn't read the Bible well. It will be so fast. The Bible says like the twinkling of an eye. Before you know it, there will be a mass disappearance of people. You come to me for counseling, you won't find me. I'm gone. Yes, sir. The fact that you are there is a sign that when I make the altar call, you should run and come. Let me tell you this, the moment there is that glorious exodus, you will see people run to church in confusion. The Bible you will leave behind, people will run and hold it and say, what is happening? The Bible will suddenly become a bestseller. It will be the most accurate roadmap from thence. No other book, no other thing will matter. And we'll meet with him. 
and we say savior we believe you and we spent our life making the world know listen the issue of the gospel is not a task of an evangelist alone you have to understand this this is why we labor day and night to see that this glorious gospel the global harvest because a day is coming whether you like it or not Jesus Christ will return and the Bible says the remainder of the harvest together as a family that would be the unleashing of catastrophe on earth catastrophe that will make Saddam Hussein look like an angel what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing But your assignment now is to believe that he died your assignment is to believe that when he went to hell he went there for you please listen to what i'm telling you regardless who you are regardless what religion and for those of you who are watching me from all around the world i respect your spiritual convictions but what you are hearing is not an opinion of a religion a day will come everybody will believe everybody in hell today is a believer the only thing is that they believe too late so when we celebrate Easter yes eat the chicken eat celebrate with people but let there be a consciousness if Jesus is not Savior if Jesus is not lord if jesus is not king there is nothing to celebrate and then if that has happened to you then you must ask yourself am i fulfilling the other part because he says on the strength of this consciousness go and there are many ways to go there are those who go physically and labor in the vineyard there are those who finance them as they go they trust God for grace and they communicate resources don't don't please feel at ease I'm not raising any money at all we love God and we fear God but let me tell you sincerely what gives value to these mundane things that we pursue on earth is to what degree it contributes to kingdom come no matter what you have if there is no bearing if there is nothing in it whether it's a political position business family education certificate i respect your pedigree but if there is nothing in your achievement that is contributing to this goye mission i assure you you are not being part of god's program not everybody will be a pastor an apostle an evangelist but the consciousness of the global harvest this is not a church affair oh how that the father's heart bleeds every day where are the men and the women where are those who will go where are those who will make this happen can i tell you this there are over we're getting close to eight billion people on earth and only about 2.6 if i'm not mistaken are professing christians that that's including those who don't know what they are doing all together just from a statistical point now I'm saying it sincerely look up that's a serious issue we keep teaching and say one day Jesus will come do you not know that scripture declares that his coming is tied to our seriousness over the global harvest why will Jesus come for only 2.6 million billion people what happens to the remaining what happens to your uncle what happens to your auntie it is painful to stand at the shores of eternity and see someone you so love at the other side 
brothers and sisters hear me i bring you a very powerful easter message before i minister for a few minutes and we're done if we remove jesus out of the question everything we're doing we can teach kingdom that's wonderful i shared with them in lagos and i said any other thing you, if you worship the four living creatures it's still idolatry if you worship the throne it's still idolatry if you worship the 24 elders it's still idolatry if you worship heaven it's still idolatry you worship anointing it's still idolatry you worship a man of god it's still idolatry for there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved the consciousness of the global harvest is gradually eroding our minds the local assembly is supposed to be the receiving place for souls that are one so that they now be matured and grounded are we together now yes church came because of the harvest that means that people are saved and they are brought to church then they are matured they are mentored through the ministry of the fivefold they now mature they experience the victory of christ themselves then among the many other things they are involved with they now go back and also become part of the team that makes that global harvest happen some of you here god has trusted you with wealth understand the purpose of it some of you god has trusted you with tremendous influence understand the purpose of it some of you god has trusted you with all kinds of political strength understand the purpose of it some of you god has trusted you with business acumen you are veterans in business understand the purpose of it nothing finds its meaning outside of thy kingdom come project it is this global harvest that gives credence to everything so if you are praying lord give me prosperity you are praying with respect to kingdom lord give me a political position with respect to kingdom god is only interested in how what you are asking for will contribute to kingdom come up from the grave the hymn says he arose with the mighty triumph over his foe the bible says he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever together with his saints to reign scripture declares paul mentoring the church in ephesus he told us that today we have been raised up with christ jesus is no longer the only begotten he's now the firstborn of we the begotten beloved of the father what is the implication of this that number one we have peace with god number two we are now one with christ the bible says so listen the bible says so your oneness with christ is the basis of your authority is the basis of the spiritual power that comes upon your life you become a blessing when you understand you are one with christ these hands are ordinary hands but not when you walk with the consciousness that I am one with Christ then the ordinary hands become supernatural these lips are ordinary lips of clay but not when you are one with Jesus they become supernatural literally the reality of the divine life comes from the consciousness of your oneness and the Bible says he that is joined to the Spirit of God is one spirit it's a salt covenant inseparable Are we blessed dominion is now restored creation should listen to you it should submit to the sovereign grace that has been placed upon your life listen to me brothers and sisters I bring you a real message of hope and a message of power Jesus is the center and the focal point of the Christians pursuit Jesus not ministry we will teach other aspects of the kingdom life as a tool for maturing the saints but tonight from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center 
is all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Jesus be the center of your church. Jesus be the center of your church. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Listen, return back home with this consciousness. Gather your children together and tell them, look, I gave you money, I gave you education, but I need to present Jesus. He died and he rose. Today he is alive. I believe in Jesus. This is why we do the things that we do. To see that we become contributors to this global harvest. It's the reason why we trust him for greater levels of his grace. So the sick can be healed. So that the, every miracle, every manifestation of the miraculous is not just promoting the man of God. It's not just promoting the ministry. There is a message behind it. Jesus is Lord, enthroned. So whilst we begin to pray and God starts changing people's lives, some of you overnight, it will do you like a dream that a captivity of years will suddenly fade away. This time, listen, don't just celebrate the miracle. Read the letter that that miracle brought. I am Lord. Exalted. Reminds me of my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. It remains ever fresh. It's an encounter that never fades. That face that I saw, you can look at it for the rest of your life and not be tired. It's not like men that I look at your shoe, I look at this, I'm tired. No. I'm about to make an altar call and then we'll pray. This resurrection day, you should not walk back with the chains that came with you. Because it is true that he's risen. The resurrection is what gave us justification. Now that we are justified, we have access to all the dimensions of grace. The Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Are we together? I know that there are people here you sang thank god for the brilliant worship team and all the mighty things that had happened here but you are in this auditorium thousands of you you are outside all of the overflows down the thousands of people following from around the world we must get to the point where we make jesus the desire of nations not just ministry jesus we must make Jesus become the, the focal point in this city. Wherever you are. Do not allow this significant day to pass. Whilst you are seated inside and outside, the spirit of the living God is talking to you. And he's saying you need Jesus. Not just as a religious experience. Now. Probably there are some of you, you once gave your life to Jesus, but right now looking at your life, you know that you need to come to him again. Aside from those here at the balcony, every other overflow, I would request when I make the call that you just walk to your projector screen and then those outside too, those online you can follow very carefully. I'm going to count one to five and I want you to leave your seat sincerely. If you're saying, Apostle, I need Jesus as a matter of life. I'm not pretending it. He will win that war. No matter where you are, no man condemns you. This is home. Come. One.
two keep coming celebrate them as they come you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today you reign in heaven and now exalted i really want to worship you my god you have won my heart and i am yours forever and ever i will love you you are the only one who died for me gave your life to set me free so i lift my voice to you Jesus is still calling people don't sit back and say we came there are so many people and i'm ashamed no leave your seat and come celebrate them as they come outside all the overflows down those following online from the us to europe to asia all over the world he calls you today this is the greatest gift we can give his majesty to celebrate this day Someday when we stand before him, we will see everyone who is out here. And we will rejoice. What a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing. Don't let the devil condemn you. This is home. You are not coming to a funeral. This is where you exchange your weakness for his strength. This is where you exchange your limitations. This is where you exchange every cost for his strength. Hallelujah. Stick it up. You know, I'm looking at an adorable baby here that came with her mother, and I almost feel like just grabbing that lady to lift her up. I've got a message from the Lord, hallelujah, a message unto you I bring, it is recorded in his word, hallelujah, it's only that you look and leave, sing it with me, look and leave, my brother leave, look to Jesus, Right and leave. We've got a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. It's only that you and leave. The Bible declares, For God so loved the world that he gave then his one and only begotten. Today he's the firstborn of we the begotten. To the end that whosoever believes in him. The Bible says he should not perish, but have everlasting life. I thank you for the courage to come. It takes a lot of courage. Please lift your right hand with me as high as you can to the heavens. Jesus is standing here. I want you to make this declaration. Let it be from the depth of your heart and let it be in truth. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. You're before Jesus. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus thank you for your death thank you for your resurrection tonight i have heard your word and i declare that i love you with all my heart i declare according to the authority of scripture that jesus from today and forever is my lord my savior and my king i declare that from today i walk in victory satan 
take your hands away from my life he's hearing you say it again satan take your hands from my life i declare that i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen and amen praise the name of the lord father as a trophy of honor we present to you these souls it is a joy to see them come to become part of this global family and lord we thank you because no man comes to you except you draw them the eloquence of a preacher cannot draw people it is the goodness of god that leads men to repentance therefore lord i pray that you will keep them i commend them to the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the word i declare that you walk in the newness of life from today in the name of jesus now very quickly this is what i want you to do there's someone waving the placard there's a counselor there please i will request all of you in concert just follow the counselor the placard they'll just have your details very quickly and you return to your seat can we honor them as they go koinonia is this the best you can do celebrate them same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me that's the profession of faith same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me speak forth your profession of faith same power that conquered the grave lives in me let every infirmity hear you let every situation hear you your love that rescued me God lives in me chapter 2 and verse 14 we're going to pray the bible says having spoiled principalities and powers blotting out every handwriting and ordinance that was against us which was contrary to us he took it out of the way nailing it to his cross 15 it says and having spoiled principalities the word spoiled there means to plunder them he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it we are going to pray and we are going to shake off everything provided it was nailed to the cross it must be nailed in your life today are you ready to pray lift your voice in one minute and declare when you rose again everything that was not god died and i declare by the spirit of grace i am a child of god and everything that is not with the Christ must let me go now. Lift your voice and pray. We are praying. Someone pray. Every high thing must come down 
Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome, you overcome, babe Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome, Declare to the realm of the spirit Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown Every failure must come down. Every sickness must come down. Every delay must come down. Every cost, every yoke. He wears the victor's crown. Sing it from your heart. Every body must come down. Every tongue must shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You are the man. the voice of Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Everything that is not of God that is in this place and in your life is about to give up now. Listen. Please do not keep quiet. In the next one minute, I'd like you to call by name everything you know was nailed to the cross that is a concern in your life and tell it in the name of Jesus it's time to go. Poverty was nailed to the cross. Cost is unyoked. Delay was nailed to the cross. Is someone paying Koinonia pay inside, outside, following online? Decree and declare we establish the victory of the Christ over situations and circumstances, over my health, over my children, over my job. I declare up from the grave, he arose in victory and a partaker of that victory. Politicians pray, business people pray, heads of parliament pray. Break every pain, every handwriting, every cost, every yoke, every manipulation of darkness. I come against you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. This is the time to pray. Declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Pray for your children. They come under the city of Christ. Pray for your job, your business, your ministry. Pray for your family. Hallelujah. Look at me. Look at me. When they came to look for his body, they said he is risen. He is no longer here. That means I can't be, I can't be where you knew me yesterday and where you met me yesterday. The Bible says up from the grave. He arose. You are going to declare your advancement in Christ. Lord, I reject this position. I declare by the Spirit, prophetically, I'm moving forward. I was raised up. I must rise up. I was raised up. Now I must rise up in destiny, never remaining down. 
never remaining limited. Someone pray. You came to church to pray. Make decree. Husband and wife. Pray. Business people. Pray. Decree and declare. We establish victory over this home, over this ministry, over this family. You are not wasting your time. You are at standing levels in the spirit. This is Koinonia. As you pray, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the grave could not hold him. The grave cannot hold you. Failure could not hold him. Failure cannot hold you. Hallelujah, you have won the victory. Hallelujah, this I know, you have won it all for me. That could not hold you back. Yeah. You are the reason to live. You're so majesty. Hallelujah. Who is Gideon? I'm hearing a name Gideon. Who is Gideon? Gideon. I'm hearing a name Gideon. Where are you coming from? Gariki. Gariki. Where? Gariki. 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 Yes. You're Gideon. What's your name? I want to pray for you. I'm seeing the Lord bring a very great miracle to the family of Gideon. As a result of this supernatural miracle. Miracles are happening here. Miracles are happening here. Is your name Gideon? My family. Your father. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands towards you. According to the word of the Lord, I decree and declare the grace that establishes the victory of Christ over your lives and your families. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, we are talking of the power that raised Christ here from the dead. Help them, please. Please, ushers, please let's be sensitive. We are talking of the power that raised Christ from the dead. That you will never be the same. The visitation comes to your family, comes to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to pray, please. I want you to bring them out. The Lord is showing me 25 people. I'm seeing the number 25. These people have gone through circles. I'm seeing repeatable patterns over their lives and their family. What is happening to someone is what is happening to another person, unconnected. Right now, I'm seeing fire just resting on people. Father, inside and outside, I declare that everyone here at this resurrection day, bring them out, who is under the yoke of patterns. Patterns of witchcraft, patterns of devilish activities. Shabas Tenekata, Embretes Kappa, At the count of three, in the name of Jesus, may that fire rest from you. Bring them out. One, two, three. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Please help them whether you are an usher or not. The benefits of Easter, 
setting the captive free. I stretch my hands again across the balcony, the overflows. Anyone here, you came for Koinonia and there is a pattern of witchcraft that will not let you go, will not let your family go. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, you come on that judgment, the judgment of the Christ. Bring them out. Everyone lift your voice and begin to pray. Please pray. Victory is being established in our life. Enough is enough. There must be an opening of the gates. Kata la kata 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 kata. If it is true that he made a public show of principalities, if it is true that every cost and every ash have a kata 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 prosper for that, it must come to an end over your life. Now look up, please. I'm still praying. There are people here. Good things come to you, but just when you are about to handle it, failure, even at the edge of success, I'm seeing fire fall. My God, anyone under the sound of my voice, the spirit that is back of it, here in the name of the resurrected Christ, we declare they catch fire now. Bring them out. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, Yahweh. Oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, Yahweh. 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 Hallelujah. Now look up, please. The Lord is breaking patterns of death. There are families every year you must bury someone. In the name of Jesus, I declare, if there is any family that death is eyeing now, I declare and decree, death passes over your family now. We are praying. The Lord is healing someone right now. We'll soon wrap up but i'm seeing someone you have an issue with your back this is what the lord is ministering to me i don't know if it's whatever issue it is check it right now the power of god is touching you check it right now the power of god is touching you someone i don't know if you are wearing a, a neck collar is it a neck collar or a bracelet or whatever it is you have a problem with your neck check it right now a miracle is happening to you i'm about to pray for the stick I believe in miracles. I believe in the victory of Jesus. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Anyone sitting on what is yours. I come by the rod of the higher priesthood. Hear me. I speak as one sent by God. Anyone sitting on what is yours. Right now. I overturn. I overturn. I overturn. I overturn, I overturn for families, I overturn for businesses, I overturn for politicians, I overturn. I'm hearing a name Faith. Who is Faith? Faith. You're wearing a black scarf. Faith. Who is that? Please let ushers, let's help so that we don't make this place rowdy. Please. Please. Can we have some ushers here so that we don't make this place rowdy? Please don't just come out carelessly. Make it my, make it my, make it my, 
My sister, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Out of her life Jesus. now. Never to return again. Help this one. In the name of Jesus, anyone here who is under any influence that is not of the Christ, I stand by the spirit of grace and I decree and declare unto you, this night it comes to an end now. There is someone here you are looking for your brother he's been missing where is that person your brother has been missing please hear what i'm saying don't just come out at random god bless you you can return back to your seat and pray for you this one's in front please quickly we have a few minutes we have to wrap up very quickly the lord is showing me someone whose brother has been missing it's time to call them back home how long yes who else again please let's hurry up we have to save time how long what's his name he been about house for he been about house for where Bukuma. we are from river state calm down my, my sister you are before jesus the first miracle who is this gentleman are you together you are together oh, okay come my sister the first miracle is not to the person missing the first miracle is to you i'm seeing a door open before you what do you do what do you do i'm a civil servant you're a civil servant yes i'm seeing you start a business this is what the lord is showing me and this business will move you in a way that will surprise you i stretch my hands and i pray take that grace right now in the name of jesus christ you will never be the same never be the same everyone who is missing and still alive no matter where they are across the globe the grace that took the animals from where they were and brought them to noah's ark i command in the name of jesus that grace finds your loved ones and brings them back home in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ Is it Jephthah? I'm hearing a name Jephthah. Jephthah. You are up, you are in one of these balconies. Jephthah. Is there someone like that? Please let him come. I want to just speak to him and then we are done. Lay your hands, those trusting God for healing. I want to pray right now. As we worship in your presence. There is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, there's healing in your name. What's your name, sir? Jephthah. From where? Ocean State. I How want to pray I? for you next month may is going to be a strange month for you and your family Amen! take that place right now in the name of jesus christ listen one of the graces that god has put here is a grace that insists that you will never be at the same level you have to believe this whilst we do not serve god because of things our attention is on jesus but there are consolations to our christian experience we don't serve god and remain at the same level sir doctor sir that's madam i'm seeing an anointing coming on your wife dr Shwaibu, sir. i'm seeing the anointing and the lord is saying that there is a dimension of the prophetic that is on her and there is a dimension of favor he's also bringing upon her i stretch my hands by the spirit of grace 
and in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will begin to open to you very strange things in dreams, visions, prophetic encounters. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help her, please. There is someone here, your father is a member. Now, I, I know that you most likely will find a lot of people, but I am seeing the Lord is asking me to pray an avert assassination. From, I'm seeing this is this is a member of house of assembly federal house this is someone on a journey and i'm seeing like an accident and all of a sudden they just kill this man for nothing i'm not a prophet of doom we are ministers of life we stand in the name of jesus there may not be time to call that person and there may be multiple people and this is not to inflict fear please hear me don't misunderstand what we're saying god reveals so that he will redeem in the name of Jesus Christ whoever plans evil for you may their evil fall upon them by the power of the Holy Spirit how many of you here you don't have to come out just lift your hands you are trusting God for supernatural jobs I just sense that there is a grace in this place please believe it you've had the testimonies God is a God of miracles in the name of Jesus, some of you are standing for your loved ones. I declare by the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Between now and the next three months, by the power of prophecy, return with strange testimonies. Return with strange testimonies. Hallelujah. Listen, when God granted me the grace and the privilege to lie down in Baba Deboye's prayer room, I was alone in that prayer room and when I rested my head I said Lord the only grace that I desire in this place even though you have shown me mercy the grace for answered prayer you have placed something upon this father of faith that was one of the things I told the Lord I said since you granted me the privilege to lie down in the same prayer room where he lies to pray my prayer is that what you placed upon him that makes these declarations to not fall to the ground may it come upon me and I'm standing now to speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ who is the helper of men please hear me every door that has refused to open over your life and over your destiny in the name of Jesus if the door of the grave opened then may the door of your destiny open If the door of the grave opened, may the door of your destiny open. 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 Ephata. Open. Open. Katus Kateleketaba. Open. Open. We break every lock. Open. Go forward. Advance. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says an angel came from heaven, rolled away the stone. When it was time for Lazarus to come out, he said, roll the stone. Before manifestation, the stone that blocks you, blocks your visibility. There are stones that sit on people's businesses, sit on their career. In the name of Jesus, the same angel that rolled away that stone, we declare from heaven by the ministry of angels, every stone stopping your visibility in the name of jesus the christ let it be rolled away now hallelujah let me tell you an interesting story something happened while i was coming in I was on my way and in the aircraft, I was tired, just wanted to rest on my way here. 
And then the man who was sitting close to me, he probably may even be here. Listen. All of a sudden, this man looks at me and he says, Sir, your face looks familiar. And I stretched my hands. I said, I'm Joshua Selman. He said, I can't believe this. And he sent his wife a text and said, You can't believe who I'm sitting close to. And he showed me something, you know, these things they do on social media, maybe a picture of somebody running in shock, something like that. And I told him, I said, Sir, I don't know you, but whoever prayed for you before you got on this plane, you should find that person. And bless that person because I told him as soon as you sit down here all of a sudden my eyes were open I began to talk to him about things about his life and I said but look how favor can locate a man 50 minutes flight alone with this man talking with him praying with him let me tell you you see but this favor you see please listen listen favor can take you and the help of your destiny and just put you together believe what i'm telling you i'm saying that because i want i will never stop praying it until your life becomes an expression of the favor of god hallelujah i once had a story of i think a general also in the army or maybe some big man general and he wanted to send a text to someone that he had discussed the issue of employment for someone then he sent it to a wrong number now listen the person who got it rejoiced and he replied he said thank you sir and the general now felt bad and said how do i the way this man has said thank you so many times how do i now tell him you are not the one listen listen this is a true story that someone finished laboring just to send a text and say mr man come the spirit of god said no someone is there is a grace on a, a person hear me abuja is not a very big city the voice of god is loud enough to reach all the six local governments in this city and it is able to fish out whoever has been anointed not everybody capable was sent to help you not everybody available was sent to lift your hands joseph of arimathea was there to help jesus come down from the cross to the grave simon the nigger was there to help carry the cross even if you are jesus you still need help in this journey of destiny the holy ghost is called a helper i want to pray for people here because you are carrying loads by yourself financial loads intellectual loads some of you have court cases and there is no one to help you some of you have issues you need help in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but believe me when i tell you who likes you matters i stand by the god of heaven and i pray whoever must speak for you whoever must arise by the spirit of god here at this ground in the name that is above all names i place grace on your life may your helpers find you we call them from the parliament we call them from the presidency we call them from their homes let me find coincidences connect you to them in the name of jesus christ I don't know what led me to pray this prayer but you see we don't just pray carnally i believe in what i'm saying listen to me there are some of you your dreams and your visions will remain in the realm of the spirit until god is able to find a man directed through prophecy to your life my life is a product of what helpers can do one genuine helper sent by god can turn your life around hear me not every intelligent person has the luxury of finding visibility among kings there are times you are capable but you don't have access to the gate you will need someone who is already at the gate oh joseph even though you can interpret dreams 
if the wine presser does not talk to the king to call you help her please help her please we are wrapping up but please understand every time you come here there is no service that is regular god is doing something definite it's called koinonia when god is speaking he's addressing specific cases see i bow my knees to my god whom i serve you don't have to kneel but i pray for you anybody who needs to be in your life this week i call upon the god of my covenant may they show up for you may they show up for you koinonia Daria, abuja global may they show up for you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the lord the ministry of destiny help us are real believe what i tell you you don't have to know them you can wake up one morning and someone can call you and say god gave us an instruction that every month for the rest of your life this is what we should do for you there is such a thing like that it's not a license for laziness but don't listen to that narrative that you must suffer and walk through everything what then is the excellency of the cross please hear me there are some of you in this city abuja you are the only one fending for yourself if god does not send help you will compromise because of pressure i pray for you again may my god raise helpers for you may my god raise men and women to help you please listen to me simple things become very easy when a helper is in your life easy things become difficult when you are standing on your own listen a man of God was about to start ministry and he went to God's servant Bishop David Oedeko for an advice and he looked at him I'm not Yoruba but he spoke to him he said this is the advice I would give you and he spoke in Yoruba he said never fight alone that was the advice you fight alone without any backing you will die alone there are many of you fighting spiritual battles there is no prophetic backing that is standing with you listen please hear what i'm telling you you are in the midst of people you know if they have a chance to kill you if you're a politician here please hear me it takes more than the ability to deliver a mandate the king priest prophet spiritual formation can never be broken unbelievers know this you are a businessman you are in the midst of people you are calling upon the name of the lord you know these people have vowed god knows your heart he sees your heart he knows that jesus will be exalted through your life and here they come this is the advantage of the prophetic to stand in partnership with the holy ghost as a support system everything fighting you fighting your family fighting your destiny in the name of jesus christ it goes down now it goes down now it goes down now two more prayers and we're done two more prayers and we're done The Lord is bringing restoration. Listen, there are doors that open before. It opened once. You tasted of the blessing of that door. It may be access to a man. It may be access to a helper. It may be access to a level of grace. I'm speaking prophetically. Some of you tasted of the grace for the miraculous. You tasted of certain anointings. You tasted of the grace for prayer and intercession. You tasted of the grace to fast. You could wake up in the night and pray for five hours. But something happened. Like the hair of Samson. Let me pray for someone. Receive a restoration of grace. Everything that was once in your life. 
and has gone back I call it forth by prophecy I call it forth by prophecy I call it forth by prophecy please hear me I'm saying it again I don't know what left you I stand by the power of the Holy Ghost and in the name of Jesus here at this resurrection service I declare let it return to you now relationships return finances return help us return grace is return opportunities return final prayer for tonight look at me yesterday night I was so tired I just wanted to rest and the next thing I saw was someone who was standing and I just saw like knives knives on like incisions on the body listen to me I believe in this season Satan is is working to use sickness as a tool to destroy people's finances hear what I'm telling you I'm speaking to you under the unction of prophecy mysterious infirmities that just come out of nowhere and start wasting your resources you will treat it it will not go until your finances dry down or for some of you who seem to be the breadwinners of families all of a sudden the devil afflicts those around you and he puts pressure on you the waster we must take authority over the waster the bible says a body has thou prepared for me every parent here you will not bury your children every parent here you will not bury your children that thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilence the destruction that wasted in noonday please hear me infirmity is the spirit in the name of Jesus I declare every manifestation of the spirit of infirmity over lives and families that the waster is taking advantage of to dry up your resources frustrate your Christian experience and cause you to count God unfaithful we declare that spirit banished from your life every sick body here be healed every sick body be healed blood conditions be healed migraines be healed bone conditions be healed help them please help that woman be healed now be healed now be healed now every negative report that is a death sentence over your life or you have loved ones in the name of Jesus we cancel it right now peptic ulcer be healed migraines be healed Thank you Jesus thank you Heavenly Father lift your hands and just wave it to him as an act of worship Zaria wave your hands Abuja wave your hands our global family thank you Jesus we bless you you are mighty and we give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ now listen to me I give you one assurance in the name of the Lord in the name of the Lord Amen. by the time you are coming here next week you will return with testimonies that will dumbfound you your results will be so compelling 
even people who would not pay attention to Jesus will follow you and say I must find out where you came to that God is visiting you this much in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus amen and amen please be seated for a minute we're almost done be seated for a minute we're almost done hallelujah praise the name of the Lord